Colossians chapter 3. Now, this passage, if you were looking to the NIV translation, which is in your pews, you'll see that there's a little subhead called rules for holy living. Rules for holy living. Because what Paul will do in verse 5 and follow is tell us about what we need to do with our life. He's going to be telling us to put away, put to death, for, uh, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Sexual, uh, sexual immorality, greed, lust, envy, gossip. He says, because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. And then put on Jesus Christ. Clothe yourself with love, he'll say. He'll get down to some basic understandings of how we need to live together and relate to each other. Don't think this is all pie in the sky in the mind. But before Paul talks about the rules that we have to live by, that he wants us to live by, he wants us to know why. He wants us to know why these things are so critical. Because he knows something about the human nature that the Bible knows, that you and I know, if you're just honest with yourself, that every time somebody has a rule for you, you want to hear it, and then you want to break it. Amen? Amen? Or there are those who will say, oh, give me a rule. Oh, yes, I got that rule. And they can follow it. And they lose the, the spirit of the rule. They just say, well, I'm following the rules. I'll do whatever the rule says. But most of us are like rebellious teenagers. And you say, this is the line. Don't cross it. And you, they cross right over it. Paul knows that there is something within us that rebels against rules. The posted speed limit around a lot of the roads is 55. Meaningless to people. Because we say in our minds, oh, there's a buffer. There's a buffer, uh, a little bit over that. What is it, five, six miles? They never stop you for that. And if that's a buffer, then maybe I can go seven or eight miles over. And, you know, um, I have this radar detector on my windshield, which can tell me when somebody's looking at, for somebody breaking the rules, I'll slow down to comply with the rules, but I'm not going to obey the rules. I'm not saying you do it. I'm saying I do it. I don't have the radar detector, but I know where these cops are. I haven't had a speeding ticket in years, but that doesn't mean I don't, uh, it, that doesn't mean I just obey all the posted speed limits. I see every speed limit post as a guideline, as a suggestion, a suggestion if, if I deem the external circumstances appropriate or needful, I will go that um, speed limit. But officer, really, I, I'm fully safe, fully safe doing my own thing. That's the way we think. It's just the nature of who we are. Now, if you've ever been on a diet, I'm going to prove to you this point. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Because diets are rules. Don't eat that. Do this. Eat these things. And if you've been on a diet, and I've been on every one, you, long as you understand the rules, you can say, well, that's the good for the first couple of days, but how can I bend them? How can I maybe store up the calories? If I have 400 calories at the end of the day, that means I can have a chocolate sundae at night. You, you, you get the idea that the rules are just simply guidelines for us. And we rebel. It is in our nature to rebel. This is the biggest problem of the Old Testament. How is, gonna, how is God going to bring people into fellowship with him? They're way out of fellowship with him. They're, they are out of step with him. And um, God says, look, this is the way to live. And here's the law. And people broke the law. So they made more laws. Follow these. And they broke those. And then they, 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 uh, the more laws. And pretty soon there's hundreds of laws that people are trying to obey. That nobody obeys them. Everybody breaks them. Because rules don't work. There was one group of people that did obey the law. All of them. They were righteous. 
They were absolutely religiously pure. But Jesus called those people the whitewashed tombs. They obeyed the rules rigidly. They stuck to every single jot and tittle, Jesus said, of the Bible, of the law, except the rules never got to the changed heart. They were whitewashed tombs. So if you were looking to your NIV Bible, um, they would say, this, these are the, the rules for holy living that you're going to hear. But first, Paul says, I need to remind you who you are. This is one of the most profound things I could say to you today. In fact, do this. Open your Bibles. I can tell you don't believe me. Open your Bibles to page, I don't know what page it's on. It's Colossians chapter 3. Help each other get there. My Bible's paginated differently than yours. Otherwise, I tell you my page, but it won't do you any good. So help yourself get there, and you'll see on chapter 3 in Colossians that it says, rules for holy living. Then he gives us our subject passage today. And then on verse 5, it gets to the rules. Put to death for, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And we'll get into this in the weeks to come. But I want you to know that before Paul gets to the rules of how we ought to live, he wants to remind us who we are. Now there's a concept here I need to get across. That Paul, in order to get the body in shape, to get the, the body to follow, to obey, to desire to live in a righteous way, Paul addresses the heart. And he addresses the mind. He addresses who you are in God. He addresses, put it this way, the who, before he gets to the do. This is one of the most profound things I'll say this morning. That Paul addresses the who you are before he addresses the do this and do that. He says, you are risen with Christ. Set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the heavenlies. Set your mind on things above, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. What Paul is saying is that I want to show you who you are first. Then what you do will come naturally. I'm going to start with the who before the do. Fancy theologian would have put it this way. I'm starting with the indicative before I get to the imperative. The indicative is who you are. Who you are in Christ. Who you are as a blood-bought child of the living God. Who you are hidden with Christ. Who you are raised with Christ, what this all means, then we'll get to the do, the imperatives. Do this, don't do that. Try this, try that. We thank you for joining us online. The ministries of Christ Church Plano are made possible by generous contributions from our members and viewers. If you have found this sermon meaningful and would like to make a gift of support, please visit ChristChurchPlano.org give. Thank you.